Hi, and welcome back. If you're here today, I know that you're taking the next step to apply for your Canadian visa. So we're gonna walk through step-by-step step on how to fill out your application. It's about a 40 minute video, but I promise you, you're gonna gain a lot of knowledge on how you can do this yourself. And as well as if you are new here, please do subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our updated information. Definitely that notification bell is gonna help you, remind you to come back and get those vital information. If you like our video, please give us a thumbs up and as well as share with your friends and family if you found this information very helpful. Stay tuned as we do start the application process for your Visit Visa application. How you fill out the Canadian Visit Visa application, the IMM5257E. Now this application is what you need to apply for our temporary resident permit, our visa, in this case it is for a visitor. Okay, so as we go walk through this so one step at a time, just make sure everything is making reference to your uh, passport. For example, your family name as shown on your passport or travel document. So make sure that your surname or last name, family name, however you want to describe it, is in this section, okay? Then your given name. So how it is presented on your passport and travel document is how you input it on the form, okay? And be very careful not to misspell anything. Now, a family name that, uh, that especially goes for women who are married and they had changed their name. So here is what, uh, where you would put your previous name, uh, maiden name. So your father's name, should you be uh, a female applicant. Now also people do change their names. So whatever name that you went by before changing it would go here, uh, your family name. And then here would be your given names. Okay, so if that doesn't pertain to you, just make sure you click no. Okay, so then we go down to other personal information, your sex. So um, female, male, unknown, other gender. So whatever you, you are, you select and your date of birth. Now, I tell people all the time, um, especially with my experience in Africa, people do like to change their name, uh, sorry, their, their birth date. And so please, please, please make sure you know your birth date. Um, I don't encourage anybody to change their, um, their birth date, but anyway, it happens. All your documentation needs to be corresponding together. So your date of birth, your year, your month, and then the day and where you were born. So that goes here, okay? The city of where you were born and your country or territory, okay? So that would go there. Okay, so we got through that. Now, next we are gonna go into where you are residing currently, okay? Oh, sorry, up here would be your citizenship. So wherever you are, wherever you were born is what you would put here. And then you go forward into where you're living. So if you're living anywhere other than your home country, you're definitely gonna put it here. The country, your status, and when you started living there, and if there's an expiry date of when you're gonna be leaving. Okay, that is current. And then you can go into your previous countries that you lived in. Okay, so you need to make sure that you list everything. Okay, um, during the past five years, have you lived in a country or territory other than your own country of citizenship? So yes or no, then you fill in the details. Okay, um, the country or territory uh, where you're applying, is it the same as the country or territory of residence? Yes or no? Okay, goes here. Okay, so then you go into detail um, of your marital status. If you're married, let's go here. Annulled marriage, common law, divorce, legally separated, married, single, unknown, or widowed. Please select what pertains to you. Now, if you are married or in a common law relationship, you need to indicate the date when you entered into that relationship, okay? That goes here. 
Okay. Now provide the name of your current spouse or common law partner. So her family name or his family name and right here they're given names. Okay. And now we're going to go on to page two. Okay. We're going to continue with the personal details. So have you ever been married or in common law relations before? So have you been married, then divorced, or in a common law relationship and then just left the, the relationship? Yes or no? Please and please be honest on your application. Okay, so transparency is what's going to bring you success. Okay, and being honest. So mark down the spouse's uh, family name and their given names their date of birth, okay, and what kind of relationship was it? Was it common law or were you married, okay? And then the dates of when um, you started the relationship and when it dissolved, okay? Now you go into your languages. Let's go here and you list the languages that you can speak, okay? Now, uh, if English is the only language, then you put English, but otherwise you can put your all the languages that you know in this spot. Now, are you able to communicate in English or in French? Yes or no? Okay, so if you can, okay, you can pick both or neither or one of them, okay? In which language are you most at ease? And then you write down the language that you're most comfortable in, okay? So next we go into your passport. Your passport number here. Now it is uh, located in the top right hand corner of your passport data page. You make sure you put it in there and look on your data page and see what country it was issued in. Okay. And the uh, issue date and the expiry date. Very important. Okay. For this trip, will you be using a passport issued by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Taiwan that includes your personal identification number. You answer truthfully, yes or no. And for this trip, will you use a national Israeli uh, passport, yes or no. Okay, so national ID ident identification, uh, your national identification document, sorry. So a lot of places will have this, but if you do have it, please mark yes. And then put your document number here, okay? Where it was issued, which country or territory, okay? Your issue date and expiry date. And some people don't have, some, some of the national IDs don't have an expiry date, so you would just leave it blank, okay? Now you continue down. Are you a lawful permanent resident of the United States with a valid alien, nation, uh, alien registration card, which is also known as the green card, yes or no? And if it's yes, kindly put your documentation number here, your document number with the expiry date, okay? If submitting your application by mail, which I don't encourage because, you know, it's better to have it online, it's easier, it's less complicated. But anyway, if you are corresponding uh, uh, by mail, all correspondence will be to the address unless you indicate your email address below. Indicate email address with authorized all, cor will, author sorry, will authorize all correspondence, including file and personal information to be sent to the email address you specify. Okay, if you wish to authorize the release of information from your application to a representative, indicate their email address and mailing address in the section and on the IMM 5476 form. Okay, so down here you write down your current mailing address, where you are residing. Okay, so be very specific, the town, the country, the province, and you know, Look up your zip code, look up your postal code. It doesn't take long to do that. I like to see a fully completed application, no blanks. That way they know that um, you've read it. And if you don't know, just oh, what I would do, just so they, they know that you read it, just put an A if you don't know. Oh, if you can. No, nope, I guess you can't. So, and then your district. An A, not applicable. That way you know that you've read it. And then your district, if you don't know your district, or maybe there isn't a district, then um, they didn't like that. So I just have to go N-A. 
<sighs> let's delete. <sighs> let's delete before this. Let's delete it out of the video. Let's just get right to the point. Okay, NA. The district, if you don't know or there isn't anything, just not applicable. Okay, make sure everything is filled in. Now, your resident, uh, your residential address. Now, is it the same as your current mailing address? Most cases it is. Press yes. But if it's not, if you have a different residence to your mailing address, put that information here. Okay. Again, don't leave anything blank. Don't leave anything blank. Now, your telephone number. If you have a Canada or a US number, definitely click on that. It's going to change the structure of this. You see how that is? If you go here to other, which is, you know, out of the countries, it also makes it different. Here they automatically put the country code one. You can put your email, or sorry, your, your phone numbers here. But here, what kind of number is it? Is it a residential, a cellular number, a cellular or a business? Okay, same with over here. Okay, now your email address, put your email address, make sure it's uh, spelled correctly, and that's your personal information. Okay, now the details of your visit to Canada. Why, why are you going? Why are you going to Canada? They want to know why. Okay, so is it business, tourism, short-term studies, return student, returning worker, super visa, which is for parents and grandparents, other or family visit. Be honest. Put it down, okay, and make your selection. Other, okay, what is your other reasons for going? If it's not on the list, definitely click other, okay, and then explain, then, ex then explain, okay, your reason. How long are you gonna be gone for? So they want very specific details. So say the year, the month, and the day, and when are you gonna be exiting the country? Okay, and now your available funds for your stay. Typically, um, they suggest, and, you, and it's hard to find this information, so let me enlighten you. Typically, for a visitor going to Canada, they would like to see either uh, either between uh, around $100 to $150 Canadian in your bank account per person per day. So that will give you an idea of how much you should have allocated in your account Okay, so that should really help give you an idea of how much they are expecting. That is a very common question. How much money do I need to prove? So one, I would be safe with $150 per day per person on your trip. And so you can just calculate it. Okay, the name, address, and relationship of any person or institution that you will visit. Now, if it's a person, if it's family, write their name. If it's a, the relationship, say it's your cousin or your brother or whoever and their address, okay? Anywhere that you are planning on uh, visiting, please indicate that, okay? So, you know, and I've also just, if you're not going to see anybody that you're just going to visit, put the hotel name here. Hotel, this is where you're going to be staying, you know, relationship to you, well, it's just a, a place where you're, it's, you know, it's a hotel, right? And then the address. Okay, so put that in there. Now your education. Now, people get confused on this. All they want is your highest level of education. Okay, so if you answer yes, that you have post-secondary education, including university, college, or even an apprenticeship training program, put yes. Okay, so make sure you have those dates, the field of study, the school, the name of this facility, the city or town, country or territory. Okay, and then you select your state. Okay, if it allows you. <laughs> okay, and if it doesn't and you can't enter anything, then you have no choice but to leave it blank. Okay. Now, they want your history of the last 10 years that you've been working. So if you're not even if you've not even worked for 10 years uh, because you're very young and you're in your early 20s, you have not worked 10 years, just put all of your work experience. It doesn't have to be 10 years. However, it's very important not to leave any gaps. 
okay, especially on those that have uh, been in the working class for more than 10, 15, 20 years. They don't want to see any gaps. And if you, if there are gaps, they need an explanation to why you are not working. Okay. Um, if you're retired, not working or studying, please indicate, just be honest. If you're retired, please provide the 10 years before your retirement. Okay. They want to see what you've been doing. Okay. Very, very important. Okay. So be very specific. Now, next we want some background information and we're almost completed this application. So they want to know, and this is only for those who are 18 of age and older. Within the past two years, have you or your family members ever had tuberculosis of the lungs or have been in close contact with a person with tuberculosis? Yes or no. Do you have any physical or mental disorder that would require social and or health services other than medication during a stay in Canada? Be honest. Just let them know. Yes or no. Okay. If yes to questions 1A or 1B, please indicate details and name of the family member if applicable. So again, transparency, it doesn't matter if you have a medical condition, just, you know, be very truthful in your application and, um, definitely even have a medical done before and, and um, submit it in your application saying that you are fine. Yes, you may have this condition, you know, maybe you're prone to seizures or something, but you're trying to handle it with medication, but some things happen that you may need to have medical attention. So, and you're going to have health insurance, travel insurance, but anyway, just be truthful. Okay. Have you ever remained beyond the validity of your status? Attended school without authorization or worked without authorization in Canada? Yes or no. So, you know, people don't know this either that just because your visa, um, just because you have on your, your letter that you are expected to leave at a certain time of day, that is okay. The legal time that you can stay in Canada is no longer than six months so keep that in mind that you know say you want to extend your holiday or whatever you can do that rebook your flight to leave at a later date there's no issues with that but just be very mindful of the expiry of your passport and the expiry of the visa that's very very important okay but just but for chance if you don't leave on time as long as you are not overstaying the six months okay so if any if you've answered yes to any of these please provide your information okay have you ever committed been arrested for been charged with or convicted of any criminal offense in any country or territory again be truthful okay if you answered yes provide details you know, the repercussions of lying on an application, the consequences of that, it can be very, very harmful to you and the future. So being transparent, coming up with a solution on how things can be dealt with is better than being deported for whatever reason. Did you serve in any military, militia or civil defense units or served in a security organization or police force, including non-obligatory national service, reserve or volunteer units. Please answer truthfully, yes or no. Give details if the question is yes. Okay. Are you or have you been a member or associated with any political party or other groups or organizations which engage in an advocated, advocated violence as a mean of achieving a political or religious objective or which has been associated with criminal activity at any time? Yes or no. Have you ever witnessed uh, or participated in an ill treated treatment of prisoners or civilians looting or discretion, uh, a dis yeah, discretion of religious buildings? Okay, yes or no. If you answered yes to any of these questions, uh, three to six above, or upon request of a visa officer, or uh, you may be required to fill out an IMM 
5257 Schedule 1. However, some countries require that to be filled out anyway. So it's not just a matter of answering the questions 3 to 6. There's some countries that it's mandatory anyway to fill out. You will know that information on your application um, instructions on the document list uh, because um, it may be a requirement. So now you're finished. Make sure you double check everything that you didn't miss anything and you're going to go and you're going to do, um, you're going to consent to a uh, yes or no. Actually, this is an optional uh, yes or no. If you may, if um, ICI, which is the Canada, a citizenship of, uh, sorry, a citizenship and Immigration of Canada or an organization at CIC requests may want to contact you in the, further, in the future to ask you about any services you received from CIC prior to the application process, such as participation in, a, in an information forum. During the application process, include the application process itself, as well as orientation or accreditation services and services received after arriving in Canada, including settlement, integration, and citizenship. CIC will use this information along with information provided by other individuals for research performance measures or evaluation purposes. CIC will not use the information to make any decision about you personally. So you can make the choice if, if you are okay with it, you mark yes, if not, then you mark no. Then you go down to your signature. So I consent to release to Citizenship and Immigration Canada and the Border Services Agency, all the records and information for the purpose of processing my request that any government authority, including police, jurisdictional, uh, and state authorized authorities in all countries in which I have lived. This information will be used to evaluate my suitability for admission to Canada or to remain in Canada pursuant to Canadian legislature. legislation. I declare that I have answered all the questions in this application fully and truthfully. So then you go ahead, you type in your you type in your um, signature, your name, the date, and then you validate, okay, you validate your application. And what this does, and once you validate it, I, it won't validate because I'm not filled in any information. There's gonna be pages of barcodes, okay? And that will be submitted with your application. It will be scanned on their end and all this information will come up. So I hope that was very helpful for you. And I wish you all the best with your visa application. And should you need any assistance in the future, do leave your comments or you can email me directly. I will leave my email address in the description so you can reach out should you have any questions.